I'll take care of turrets and shields. So now when we have all the information on hand, and I have done it all, all information for you regards to the AI Nanocore is here. Boys and girls, man and woman, 900 of you watch my videos, 60 of you like them. What's wrong with you people? Don't you think I work hard enough? Am I not worthy one second of your life to hit that like? Did I offend you? 840 people seems to think so. Or perhaps I've not done enough hours for your one second. Or you just forgot. So do it this time. And why don't you like 10 of my videos while you're at it? You will sleep like a baby. I promise. Okay, where were we? Oh, we didn't start. So let's dissect this nanocore. If you're still around, that is. Most have already fled because people screaming wolf left and right. Ah, oh, come on, I know it's for views. And you know I'm always joking. Anything for a laugh, huh? So for those who are still around, let's start with the elephant in the room. The intelligent AFK nanocore. The thing that many people just feel was enough. The core sure is intelligent. But it's not smart. And in my case, mine is lazy. But more on how it works, how to do it, and what to think about, and how to fix the ships, and everything else later. Now if you ever thought that the intelligent nanocore was going to be free for all to use, you are of course wrong. If you think someone can just pay and get it, well, you're right about that. If you thought you need real money to have this thing, well you're wrong. Now this nanocore upgrade is only 10,000. Now this nanocore... 10,000. <laughs> only 10,000! <000. laughs> now this nanocore upgrade is only 1000 AUR. If you pay it with your wallet. That's about 4 billion ISK to activate this one. Then it will cost you 10 million each active hour that you run it. Cause this little bad boy runs on amethyst. And max hours of daily farming is 8 hours. So let's say that the AI makes 6 mission each hour. Making about 50 million. Minus the 10 million in fuel. So somewhere around 40 million give or take every day. And if you were to grind 8 hours every day with this core. That's 100 days of 8 hours farm. To get back the isk that you purchased it for. Roughly. Take that with a grain of salt, cause I mean some people told me they make 60 million, so I'm not really sure. It could even be 50 days, so that's about 2 months. But anyway, it's a decent investment. And it's not strictly AUR. You can buy the decoding keys from Concord Pass, and get all the materials needed that way. So it is possible with in-game ISK and time. It sure will take some time, but not even near the implant time, which I feel is even worse. I want to add that this new legendary course can be customized. Not only can you change the appearance and skin and colors, you can also use the other nano cores that you have to upgrade this course stats, making this nano core more suitable and perfected for its task. So now we have a reason to buy several nano cores of the same ship with our Concord points, unless you spend it on keys. And these nano cores, we analyze them and we remap the stats if it's the wrong one, then we apply it to the legendary nano core. I kind of like this progress. I mean you're creating your personal nano core, I think it's actually pretty good. You also get the upgrade materials from the keys. But it's also possible to buy them from market. So no, nothing is cheap, but as I said, implants is not cheap either. Now how do you get this core? Well first you start with opening the nano core that you want to use. You jump in the ship of choice, you click on the core name and then this button. This will now ask you for 120 tesseract to make this into a legendary core. Now after this you need 200 tesseracts more to implement the AI. Here you can set some basic settings for the AI such as encounters or anomalies as well as how many jumps it's allowed. So to start the AI you need to undock and then you click here. It will now do as told. Remember it is not smart, it's only intelligent and here is where some issues occur. This AI do not play the way you do. It pretty much smashes all the buttons and alternate until it gets a wanted effect. It can for example web one target and then shoot another. It does notice this eventually and will try something else. So it's kinda like your electric lawnmower. Now the patterns on your lawn make no sense, but eventually the grass is short and looks nice. Same is it with this core. Here and there you find issues, but in the long term you make ISK. And this is why using and fitting the ship as well as where you do the missions, is important to diminish these issues. This AI is at its alpha state, so expect some updates and changes soon. 
Now I have tested this extensively, different fits and modules. For example you can use salvagers, but the ship will not dock when full, but it works. So if you want to be somewhat AFK and just unloading every hour or so, you can do that. Also cloaking is a thing, but I'll let you try that one. So now it's time for discussing the fitting. Now I can't give a fitting for all the ships since I only have one AI core. And it's a Vindicator. Not this one, but this one. And we will be talking about battleships here. You might ask if there is even a reason to do this on a frigate. And for AI, I don't think so. But you could get the legendary core for the amount of Tesseract needed. But I wouldn't activate the AI. But now you can actually add more stats to your legendary frigate core for manual playing. So this is kinda thing for those who hate AFK. Now back to fitting. Now I wouldn't recommend fitting the ships as the 40k DPS ships that you probably have seen. It looks good but it's useless for the AI. Now stuff that is important to think about is always to use two webs. Unless you have a Vindicator with a good web. And yes, Balgorn seems to need two as well. Cause it's about slowing the frigates to a near stop. Also try to have at least one large NOS. This is for the much needed cap. Now the rest mid slot you can use as best fitted. But I'd advise you to have at least a painter or a disruptor so that the rats gets close if needed. On low slots you should not have more than one repper for T10 encounters. One is enough if you follow my steps. To make this tank enough you need at least two red resist. And this is because being cap stable is vital here since the AI will run everything all the time. It also starts with locking every ship. So I rig lock speed, cap recharge and damage. This is because your ship won't fire until all the max targets are locked. This can bug out and sometimes it seems like it only locks like one or two and nothing happens. But it's just the locking animation that is gone. So until all the enemies that you can lock is locked, your ship will have to tank without your hardeners or your boosters. So the faster lock is a less unresisted tank. Now I slow with my webs at 99% but I still have issues with some small ships. I think this is a bug but that's why I also have a painter. So I make the frig closer to a destroyer. I didn't have any more issues after that. I also heard somewhere that when AI dust encounters you only get half the isk. But I've not noticed that so I cannot confirm it. But I have been reading a ton of bad comments about this AI. And many of them is exaggerated just to hate on this as much as possible. It's like that's the only thing that is fun to do nowadays. Hate on everything and make people leave the game. I don't know if leaving the game solves anything. Cause as we see, they just change the type of gamers who play the game. And they trade that with us. Now I think that working for something is the only way for it to pay off. Giving up is always giving up. Alright, sorry back to the game. I would advise you to skill the new skills to at least level 4. They are about 200 million each and can be bought in the skill tab. Now they don't make that much of a difference unless you got the advanced and expert too. But for now they are very very expensive. So to close this part of the video. If you ask me, then I think just buying the biggest bundle of AUR, converting that to plex and buy what you want the same day. I think that's worse than this. And we had that since day one. I will just be quiet for a sec and let this one sink in a bit. I mean now they can buy a core and farm money that takes longer than just swipe a card. But yeah of course that is not all. This gets better. I'm not sarcastic now. We have a weird type of reputation farming. For the dumbest faction I've heard. The doves or the hawks. Sounds like a football team. But that's not important right now. The fact that this is something new to do is great. We had a similar event a while back. But not really like this. Small differences. You pick a side and you help out. You do some missions. You make quite good isk actually. I do approve this and I hope that we see more. We also have this iron rain thing. And this is also like before when you warp in you get blown up or you cloak up and sit out your time. I never liked those back in the day so I don't think I will do much of those now either. But it's not a bad event for some. But I'm not the guy to ask if this is better than the last one. So try it out and see what you think and you can tell me about it. So today in Evecos we got the AFK for normal encounters for those who want to. But we also got harder missions that we can't use the AI to do. So the sort of obsolete encounters now have a purpose, while your active gaming have some new stuff. I must say that I like these active versus AFK things to do, and I hope they expand on this, so we can get even harder stuff to do. 
There's also stuff to fix with the AI core. So let's talk about it. What needs to be fixed as soon as possible? Well, my ship has the habit of warping to a safe spot and we'll wait a few minutes. Kinda like taking a break. I have no idea why, but that needs fixing. Also how the AI behaves can improve. I assume that the reason for locking everything is so that it can decide what to shoot at and let the rats that are potentially dangerous get in range, but it does not seem like that. It's also not that it takes automatically like the smallest one first, so what I think we need is more settings. For example, prefer the target range or size, and prefer the targets webbed or painted. This would make a range ship be able to focus on a size that has a painter on since a web can't reach, but maybe want to have a webber just in case. Also in settings we should need a switch target timer, for example no damage to target, 1 to 5 minutes. This way the ship won't linger too long on an elite frig for example. Also activating hardeners on targeting and boosting on actual damage received. And oh yeah removing that annoying text. Less than one hour left on the amethyst. That shit is annoying as hell. Now if you got it and you can't get rid of it then yeah the only thing you have to do is to actually feed the nano core some more of these amethysts and uh, relog the game. So fix it. And if you guys have noticed anything else that needs to be fixed, then let me know in the comments. So in a way, Eve Echoes is the same as before. Some stuff is iffy, and some stuff is great, and some stuff is for a new type of gamers. And those who want to do different things throughout the day. And of course, those who want to buy stuff, they will buy it. And sure, if you run from games who have pay to win, I understand. But in this game, money is not everything. None of course is not everything. Ivecos is in a way a team sport, where the biggest always lose to the smaller masses. Well not always, but most of the time. It's not like other pay to win where you just have better stats and you automatically win. So stay with me in Ivecos if you want guys, or leave the game if you feel you had enough. Just don't say that you will leave and make others leave, while you still play yourself. Stand for what you feel and do what you say. It might take a long time until we see a game that fits everyone and I think that will never be made. So enjoy what we have and don't spend if you don't want to. If you want more top tier content consider subscribing and if you want this game to be better then like my bloody videos. It's important. Let's together work to fix the game and I know it might seem pointless at times but friends it's not about how hard you can hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and still don't give up and you can thank Rocky for that one. And I'll see you guys again.